All right, hey guys, it is Subaki Swag, and I'm coming to you with my review of Unlimited Fafner episode four, Tear the Dragon Kind. And I can never ever seem to get this review out on the day that it comes out. Hopefully, starting soon, I will be able to get my reviews out on time. Hopefully, like when I whenever I move, I will be able to have better internet so that way I can actually get my reviews out when they're supposed to be. So, today's my catch up day. So yeah, this episode. This episode was actually pretty awesome because like we saw like in last week's episode or whatever, they saved Iris and in the beginning of this episode we see this little girl, she's in a cage and she's making jewels with her dark matter magic. And she just, she looks so scared and hurt, like she's being guarded by people with guns and she, and then somebody comes and they save her and it turns out that you actually saved her at one point in her life because he was in the military, of course, and he was sent to kill people who kidnapped her and she grew an attachment to him. So, we don't find out, out until a little bit later. So, pretty much, like, throughout the episode, like, they say that nobody, well, they have a physical exam, and it turns out that the, um, the, I guess you could say, like, principal, the leader of Midgar, she, she's gay. Yeah, you can tell she's gay, which is awesome. And she, like, she singles out you because you is the only male at Midgar. Everyone else are girls. So she says that she is going to give him his examination herself. So literally all she does is like lick his hand. <laughs> like literally she just licked his hand and she was like, okay, I'm done. So pretty much the whole physical examination was to determine whether or not their, their emblem was glowing because there was a dragon that was um, like in route or at least near, in route near where they are at right now. So they were checking to make sure that none of them were glowing so that way they would know that the dragon wasn't coming after any of them again. But they find out that, well, they bring two people in because they found two, they found two girls that were in the range, like in the path range of the, of the dragon and they brought them to Midgar to keep watch over them. And it turns out that the one that the dragon is after is the little girl. Her name is Tear. That pretty much, like, she literally almost, like, blew the school up. Because they kept, she was, everybody was telling her that she wasn't a dragon. Even though she has, she has, like, cute little, she has cute little horns. But she really isn't a dragon. She's a G. So... She was told for so long that she was a dragon that now whenever whenever anybody tells her that, she goes ballistic and she literally tried to blow up Mitsuki and the school. So, you came up and she just clung to him after that. She was like, since I'm a dragon and you're a dragon, you're my husband. That makes you my husband. We're going to live happily ever after, blah, blah, blah. And he says nothing. I mean, this girl looks like she's a little girl. And that was one thing I don't understand about a lot of animes and mangas that I've seen and read is that most of the time when stuff like that happens the person doesn't stand up for themselves I mean if somebody attached themselves to me and told me that I was going to be their wife I did not know them or I didn't have any attraction to them whatsoever I would tell them straight up like hey no it don't work like that but maybe that's just me I don't know but pretty much the whole episode after that was tear clinging to you and just pretty much like telling him all the stuff like them being husband and wife and how they're going to get married and she won't talk to anyone else the only person she'll talk to is him and it's just a whole lot of a whole lot of stuff going on but other than that this whole episode we see like um you like slowly getting her to warm up to people she started warming up to like iris and iris she needs to stand up for her man because she just kissed him in the last episode and then now she's letting this little m minion run you. So, she pretty much got, so she got jealous and she's been following you around making sure that um, Tyr doesn't get any leeway on her over him. So, Iris, like, she starts becoming close to Iris and she starts getting close to Mitsuki and... 
you pretty much tells her that you need to start being friends with everyone, not just with us, because we're all a family, even though I'm not technically not a family, part of the family, because um, the girl, I can't remember her name, pretty much said that he's only an apprentice now, even though he saved Iris and saved the school, but maybe that's just me, I don't know. So... She was like, okay, and then she went to the class and tried to talk, and then everybody started acknowledging her and talking to her, and she became happy, and she finally sat by herself, and then she finally slowly, like, moved away from you and was able to actually be a part of the school and not just, like, sit in his lap, and then there was a part that was so funny. <laughs> Iris was like, well, can I sit in your lap? Well, can I take Tears place of sitting in your lap during class? And she was blushing, and she was like, oh, that's so cute. So... Yeah, this episode, it was actually pretty awesome. And then they show, like, at the end, they show, um, they show Tia, they're trying to teach her how to use her dark matter, and she, she can create, like, little bubbles of dark matter all around her, which actually looks pretty dope, but while that was happening, she starts hearing his voice, and it's a woman in a long black cloak telling her, like, she tells her over and over that she's a dragon. She keeps telling her that she's a dragon, because when they rescued her, she was at an, uh, she was a part of an occult. They pretty much worshipped her and told her all her life that she was a dragon, which is why whenever somebody tried to tell her that she wasn't, she flipped out. So, this woman in black cloak kept telling her that she was a dragon, she was a dragon, and and this huge, like, swirling vortex comes around her. And then you see, like, an eye open. And that was the end of the episode. So it looks like, it looks like Tyr might actually be able to become, like, a dragon. Like, she might not necessarily be able to control it. But she might actually be able to turn into a dragon. Which would actually be pretty dope. And it would probably be helpful if she can control it. If she could use that to fight the other dragons. But, I mean, that's just awesome to me. I need to stop talking with my hands. So, as always, I would love to hear how you guys felt about this episode. How do you think things are going to turn out? Do you think that you, well, not you, do you think that Tyr can actually become a dragon? If so, how do you think this is going to turn out for them? At least, I want to say that if she can become a dragon, the only person that she might not harm would be you. And that's only because she feels so strongly towards him. But then again, if she becomes a dragon, she loses all concern of self then she still might try to eat him too or something so yeah this episode is so freaking awesome i love this episode and i'm so looking forward to next week's episode but as always please remember to comment thumbs up and subscribe it helps me a whole lot and this is Swag saying adios